Hi everyone, it's Justine. Today I want to talk about hats because people don't really wear hats anymore and I think it's a pity if they disappear. So I would like to show you different types of hats and I hope that when you see them you'll think oh I had a grandfather who had a hat just like that or oh that's a hat my grandma would wear when she was sunbathing on the beach. Hats make me nostalgic for some reason. <laughs> but anyways, let's go. First, do you know how the parts of a hat are called? The part here on the head is called the crown. This inward curve here is called a crease. And here you have two more little creases on the sides, but that's not mandatory. This part here is called a brim. That's a bend. And usually you have on proper hats in ancient times, like 50, 100 years ago, you have a nod or a little flower or a feather or something to decorate and make it personal. On the inside, you usually have a ribbon or a piece of fabric here so that you don't sweat directly on the fabric of the hat because this little piece here you can actually replace. Once you know that, it's pretty easy. The crown and the brim vary in proportions. That's it. You put a ribbon or not and you're done. Yet each hat has a very different style and when you see a hat, you can tell the personality and the social status of the head it covers. So it's really interesting. Let's start with the chic ones. All the names will be written in the description below, don't worry. Let's start with the chic and bourgeois hat among all. That's the Hamburg hat. It has a feather, it's usually made of felt, and with one big crease in the middle. That's the hat of Winston Churchill and of Al Pacino in The Godfather. So today it's called the Mafia hat. But I feel that's a bit unfair. The more casual version of it is a Trilby hat. The brim is narrower and you can make it go downwards or upwards, for example at the back, as you want. That's the hat of Sean Connery in James Bond and today we men including Cara Delevingne also wear it as a boho accessory. I wear a trilby hat in winter too. That's a trilby. You see it goes up at the back, down at the front and here you have one big center crease. But it's less formal than a homework. That's mine. Since we're talking about movie characters, Indiana Jones wears a fedora hat because that's a gentleman hat and after all, Indiana Jones is a gentleman. The crown is higher and pinched. The brim is wider and it's flat. You can't actually bend it the way you want, like on a trilby. Then the bowler hat, also called derby in the US, I think. That's the hat of the British upper class in 1900. It's extremely practical for that time. <laughs> if you go riding with it and you hit a branch with your head, the hat will not lose its shape because it's completely rounded. It's also Charlie Chaplin's hat. A hat almost forgotten now is the pork pie hat, poetically named after what it looks like from above. <laughs> Buster Keaton wore a very flat pork pie hat in the 20s. But no one wears a hat like this nowadays. Maybe it will come back. That could be cool. Outdoor hats. Now come two hats that are meant and conceived to be worn outdoors. The first one is the deer stalker, which is meant to stalk deers, exactly. <laughs> it's usually made of wool, it protects the eyes, the neck, and if you pull the sides down, it also protects your ears from the cold. That's one very practical hat indeed. Guess which character wears a hat like this? One, two, three, Sherlock Holmes. The next one barely needs an introduction, that's the cowboy hat. It has a tie under the chin most of the time, so you won't lose it when you go bull riding or horse riding, all the things cowboys do. The casual ones. We're getting closer to caps and to things that are less formal now. The ivy cap, also called flat cap, is made of wool, rounded at the back, sewn with panels, that's proper construction here, and it has a little brim just on the front, almost hidden. That's the hat of the British working class, but it's worn all over the world, really. Prince Charles of Wales wears one, Brad Pitt wears one too, and it's actually trending again in the last years, at least in Europe and in the show business in the US, I think. I also see that in Berlin quite often now. Then the newsboy cap is a kind of messy, less tight version of the ivy cap with more volume and less shape. It was worn by the little guys who deliver your newspaper and clean your chimney back in the days when people read newspapers and heated their houses with wood. David Beckham was that today. This hat makes me really nostalgic. I wish I could go 100 years back in time and see what Paris looked like. I imagine it full of artists and great ideas. That's probably not quite what it looked like, but that's my romantic version of it. Then the beret. And here I'm going to have to break a myth. I'm sorry. The world thinks 
French people walk with a beret on their heads and holding a baguette all day. This is going to sound very disappointing, but we do not wear berets anymore. It's flat and soft, it doesn't actually have a shape to it, so however you put it on, it's going to stay like this. It's often made in wool or in fabric. That's the hat of Che Guevara in Cuba, but in France now it really only is worn in traditional outfits, like in the Basque country, in the southwest of France, and in the military, and there is an element of their uniforms, but that's it. Then the bucket hat looks like a bucket. That's the hat of the fisherman because it drives the rain away from your neck thanks to the angle of the brim. And literal kids wear that in summer to go to the beach. And the cool kids of R&B in the music industry, like Rihanna. It's a hat quite common in the Caribbean region, I feel. Farrell Williams wears that too. The summer ones. The gentlemen who wear a fedora hat in winter will wear a Panama hat in summer. That's the version in straw instead of felt, so it's much lighter and lightweight. And the band is usually black for a fashionable touch even when you're on holiday. There is also a women version of it with a more rounded crown, but women also wear the men version. And then the real, real British dandy will wear a boater in summer. Preferably with a striped band of his own choice. That's also good if you're going on holiday to Venice, Italy, or if you're the great Gatsby. I'm going to skip the baseball cap and the beanie, which everyone knows. The formal ones for the ladies. In Europe, royal ladies above a certain age would wear a bumper brim hat in colors matching their outfits, of course. It's a hat where the brim is large and highly curved upwards like a roll. Hillary Clinton also wore hats like this. Not so much the younger generation, I believe, except for weddings. Jackie Kennedy wore the famous pillbox hat. Very minimalist, even though she wasn't a minimalist herself, but it was a very modern hat at that time. No one wears that today, or correct me if I'm wrong. Cloche is the French name for a bell, like ringing the bell, and it's also the name of the corresponding hat. Definitely the hat of the 1920s, completely rounded and fitted around the head, so it's not going to move when you swing. That's really a hat strongly associated with one particular decade in history for me. Here, that's Joan Crawford. Then we have the mushroom hat. <laughs> its brim goes downwards really strongly and the brim could be really wide, shaped in a curvy and stiff way, which really looks like a mushroom. Now, how elegant women could wear an accessory already nicknamed a mushroom at that time, I don't really get. <laughs> an artist would wear a vagabond hat. Asymmetric, the brim goes up on one side and down on the other when you look at it from the front, so it could hide an eye and make you look mysterious and captivating. Summer hats for the ladies. If the brim is really, really wide and looks like it's waving, then it's a floppy hat. This one really has the momentum again since people have started to dress in hippie looks to go to music festivals in summer. It has a nice bohemian feeling to it and it comes in different materials, mainly fabric and straw, to be really lightweight for summer. A cartwheel hat is something that my great-grandmother would wear in summer to protect her teint from the sun with a really wide brim. Hers had a delicate rose made in fabric attached to the crown, really elegant. Today, Kate Middleton would wear such hats. Women with tastes wear a cartwheel hat for me. And that here is a design by Jean Patou. In the nose of France, people wear Breton hats in Bretagne. It's for seamen and sea women. It's usually navy blue and has a brim at the front to protect you from the sun. Today, typically, Kate Moss would wear a hat like this with a tailor blazer. It's quite trendy. Last but not least, the kind of hat that women wear to go to weddings today, at least in Western Europe, that's the fascinator hat. It has become more of a head decoration than something to actually protect and cover the head. It's not really functional anymore, it's really just aesthetically pleasing. It can be really high, completely extravagant, and if you're interested in modern millinery design, I can recommend you have a look at Philip Tracy, who has created headpieces for Alexander McQueen's shows, Lady Gaga, Sarah Jessica Parker at pretty much every Met Gala she'd gone to. That one, the Hero Keys one, is from the theme Punk, Chaos to Couture. That guy is a genius. One day I want a hat designed by Philip Tracy. I won't wear it, I will just stand in front of it and stare at it. This video was a bit like traveling back in time. It was very fun to make, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thumbs up if you did, thank you very much. The list of hats I mentioned is of course 
far from being complete and it's quite Europe centric. So I'd love to know which hats are worn in your countries. And let me know which hat wearing celebrities and movie characters I forgot. I'm sure there is a celebrity or a character for each single type of hat on this planet. See you on Wednesday and Sunday as every week. Take care. Bye bye.